joined now by Kalen DeBoer, the new head coach at the University of Alabama. And does it does it still sound strange? Does it sound different, or, or are you used to it by now? I think I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's been good. Now we're a few months in, but it's uh, it's been awesome, and it's a privilege and honor, certain to be the coach. Well, that's what we were talking before we started recording about the sun down here. You got you got a question at your press conference after the scrimmage where you had a, you had a little sunburn. And somebody thought you'd taken a helmet off of there. Yeah. Uh, are we going to have to go to the Nick Saban giant hat or like a a bucket hat kind of situation? You're, you're the hat. You the and hat I thing. are pretty pale, so yeah. Like I've lived in the sun my entire life, yeah. so. Yeah, I don't know if I can pull that off uh, like Coach did. And, uh, you know, the hat thing has been certainly a tradition here. So um, I've gone with the traditional baseball cap, but I get what you're saying. You look good in the baseball cap. It's a, yeah, it's a good look that. for you. <laughs> and, well, and, and the SEC needs more baseball cap guys. So everybody wanted to be Steve Spurrier and started wearing visors. Yeah. So you, you've got to chart yeah. your own path here. Yeah, that's definitely not me. That would <laughs> you, you see where you're going there. So I, I've never been able to. I, I don't know how Coach Spurrier ever made a visor look cool. So I, I, God bless Kirby Smart and the rest of them. Uh, but I was thinking about this. So you've actually done something like this before. So when you replaced your old college coach, Bob Young, at the University of Sioux Falls, he was 47 and five the previous four years. So you have you have taken over a program that's been dominant before. What what is that like from from when it happened there? And, and obviously what the first few months have been like here? Yeah, and that was a special situation just because it was my alma mater. And so I, was, I felt like I was a part of building it that mm -hmm. way. But I think what I did see is uh, we were a two and 10 team when I first went in there as a student athlete myself and seeing what a culture looked like that, uh, you know, has a two and 10 record versus a national championship type caliber record and a 47 and five, as you said, um, it gave me you know, an understanding, but, uh, you just, again, I think that's probably where I learned just, you got to be who you are. And, you know, I think that translated even, you know, going to Fresno state where a great coach, Jeff Tedford yeah, and the many coaches, Pat Hill, mm -hmm. Jim Sweeney, you know, some of those coaches that laid a foundation there, you know, a lot of pride tradition in, in that program as well, just like you'd have here at Alabama. So, um, had to be who I was, uh, you know, Chris Peterson yeah. and, you know, others as well as Don James at Washington, um, you know, Chris Peterson, Peterson, you know, just a few years before that had mm -hmm. done an amazing job at Washington. So again, this one, you know, coach Saban, um, is the best of the best, yeah. you know? And so, you know, uh, you know, but you just come back to what are the main things that you really stand for and. You know, I think a lot of the similarities, um, the core values, all that, they are the same in championship programs. You know, yeah. the the environment, whether you want to call it family, whether you call it, want to call it the brotherhood, um, the chemistry that exists and how that's formed, the accountability, the toughness that exists to play the game, mental and physically. Um, I think those are still some of the similarities that you find no matter where you're at. Well, and I was reading up on on Bob Young and, and the way he – built his program and what you guys said about him when he passed last year. And it, it sounded like the, the principles, the core values are almost identical mm -hmm. to what Nick Saban, Don James, which obviously is where he yeah. got that from. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like it is pretty universal. Yeah, I feel, I feel that way. I mean, it's again, kind of what I just said earlier, just how you, you see it done. And, and uh, again, when you've been at a two and 10 and you saw what that culture looked like mm -hmm. and what, uh, or not two and 10 is two and eight. Yeah. And, um, what a 14 and oh looks like, um, and how you got there, um, and understanding the love and patience and, uh, you know, the work, the mm -hmm. work is the work. Yeah. There's no shortcuts to getting to that success level that you want to be at. How, how do you evaluate a culture when you take over a program? What, what are those first few months like in terms of getting to know where the players are at mm -hmm. and, and if they fit what you're trying to do? Yeah, the the first couple of weeks and there's different reasons for it, um, you know, are always about <clears throat> just really one on one meetings, team meetings, unit meetings, um, you know, every time it's been different. And especially when you look at the last couple jobs, it's been usually a December hire. Yeah. You know, when I got to watch that, that that 30, 60, 90 day plan that you have gets thrown out the window and it's a different plan when you come in and, the middle of J January. Yeah. And, and the and, rules keep changing on you. Like the, the rules were different when you took over at Fresno right. than when you took over at Washington than when you took over here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so that's very true. I that that part I imagine is is as tough because you basically have to re recruit 
the entire roster yeah. as well as I mean, you you had to jump in and finish off a recruiting class. Yeah, and and, and in those conversations, you find out uh, where guys are at individually, and you get a pretty good vibe and feel of of uh, you know where they're at and and the the key guys that are important to the success and keeping it moving forward. And um, we just have so many great players in this program that believe in Alabama. Um, and again, this can go back to coach Saban and he built a place that it ends up being bigger than one person. Right. And that's just, uh, you know, what Alabama football stands for. And I think our guys believe in, you know, this place, uh, they certainly were recruited to different staff and Mm -hmm. a different head coach, but they truly do believe in this place as well. If your team just made the final four and you've decided you'd like to go to Phoenix to watch your team play in the final four. Well, guess what? You can do that through game time. Download that game time app. Use the code STAPLES for $20 off your first purchase, and you can get tickets to the Final Four. You can be watching on Saturday, or if you just you know want to wait and see if your team makes the championship game, yeah, you can just buy the Monday session, the, the national championship. Those big arenas, there's a lot of seats. You want to watch your team play for a national title, you can get them. Game time has what you need, and as you're looking at the game time app, It'll show you exactly where you'd be sitting. Now, obviously, State Farm Stadium, normally set up for football, so it's the, the photos you're looking at look like a football stadium, but you can imagine where the basketball court will be in the middle, and you can imagine your team maybe in the middle cutting down nets, and you could be there in person with Game Time. So download the Game Time app. Use the code STAPLES for $20 off your first purchase. And how much of it is them gelling with one another? and wanting to play together. Yeah. And, and, you know, them falling short a mm-hmm. year ago and that was kind of a connection piece. I, I would like to think it was anyway, where I felt, um, you know, us being able to understand that we both didn't reach the goals that we had and we were at different places. Uh, but you know, call it a chip on your shoulder. I've done that before. Yep. Um, call it what you want, but I think it was a way to where we connected and, and, uh, those little, those little pieces um, have helped us, I think, as a staff and player relationship uh, really come together here quickly. I, I always laugh when people say, oh, this person doesn't know how to recruit this area. Or the, I feel like if you are a winner, if you know how to make a winning program, mm-hmm. you can kind of recognize those sort of people. But I, I found it interesting when you got here, immediately you land Ryan Williams in, in that 24 class. You've got a hundred recruits on campus the f- first mm-hmm. week of spring practice to show them the program. How how eager were you to show the people here what this place looks like? Yeah, I don't think it's about proving any one or any you know group of people wrong or yeah. right. Um, I think it was just really you know that that's the the lifeblood of what needs to happen for you to be successful is the recruiting needs to be on point. And um, I mean that's what you're talking about is a huge tribute to the staff and. I knew that uh, surrounding myself with uh, go-getters, people who were great recruiters, um, understood what it took, uh, and then also some that had familiarity with the region, Mm -hmm. uh, with the conference, uh, our university, uh, and I feel like we've really nailed it on the head with with who we've brought in, uh, whether it's the recruiting staff, the coaching staff, other support staff. Um, and they, they've just been awesome. They've done a great job. Like you said, getting the message out there and we're getting people to campus and we want them to feel what this place is all about and, uh, continue to see that the tradition will continue. Well, and, and Courtney Morgan, who you brought in, uh, to work in your recruiting department, he's been at Michigan, uh, pretty well known that he helped yeah. discover some really good players there, but worked with you at Washington. He's from California. Yeah. How, how do you know when somebody's just good at finding talent yeah you know and i had a chance i mean i think the biggest thing i worked with him yeah. you know i worked with him at fresno for a year and uh it was probably one of the toughest years right you could argue i mean it is the toughest year of coaching oh, yeah. in 2020 when uh you know you're recruiting uh, but he was so creative in finding ways and uh never say die mentality and this those type of things we gelled we spent a lot of time together yeah. uh you know, during those months and, you know, getting a chance to get him back uh, to Washington was critical for our success there uh, in helping, you know, realize the goals and, and uh, the accomplishments we had last season and well, two years there. Uh, and, you know, it's just, I love what Courtney is as far as a recruiter, but I love what he is even more as when it comes to being a person. And I think people really, you know, see the quality of human he is and uh, just sort of understanding that he's genuine. Um, and it's just a blast working with him each and every day. 
So I ran into your, your defensive coordinator, Kane Womack. And so you guys worked together at Indiana. He was the DC, yep. you were the OC. And I said, well, how, you know, how did you guys wind up hiring Kalen? He said, Tom Allen, who was the head coach at the time, basically assigned him to watch a bunch of offenses and figure out which one would drive him the most crazy. And yours was the one that would drive him the most crazy. So when, when you get this call from, from Indiana, what, what, what did you think? Well, this is where I understood how good of a recruiter Kane is. Because, uh, <laughs> right. He because said he recruited, he recruited yeah. the heck out of me. And uh, that time, and, and we really grew a strong relationship before I even accepted that opportunity yeah. to go there. And then working with him um, and just how compatible he was and how team first oriented he was. But yet, you know, he was all about making sure he had a good defense on the football field. Uh, and his way of bringing a staff together, bringing players together, um, you know, that just was a special year that, you know, everything happens for a reason. And yeah. now being here, uh, it's really cool to understand the reasons why that was so pivotal, whether it's, you know, um, co other coaches like Nick Sheridan, who's on mm -hmm. our staff yep. as well, you know, our coordinator, um, you know, got the chance to coach Michael Penix that year. Yep. Uh, but, you know, the opportunity even to, co to recruit uh, some you know, during that one year down in this part of the country. Yeah. Oh, and Tom Allen was a was a big heavy proponent of recruiting this part of the yeah. country. So, so, so there's a lot of great uh, things that came from from that, and the experience there was awesome. But uh, Kane Womack has done a great job, and I knew uh, that he would be doing what he's doing right now, bringing a staff together, uh, getting the players to buy in. Um, and he's obviously a great defense coordinator, great mind. He he said he got a, a call from you when Greg Byrne gave you a call and and you called Kane and said, okay, all right, let, if you can help get me up to speed on, on college football in the state of Alabama, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and knowing Kane and I, I mean, he was all about the place where he was the head coach there at South, South Alabama. Um, it was just more of the trust I had in him, yeah. uh, in understanding, you know, really, you know, hey, is this is this a fit for me? Mm -hmm. uh, things like that, and uh, just hearing, you know, the scoop that he had and and uh, the insight he had to help me understand everything about this job. And uh, you know, from afar, you know, I, I knew uh, and understand what Alabama football is all about, but just the details because he's been in this part of the country and and part of it so long. Whether it's himself or his dad, who is a longtime coach here and coordinator in the yep. SEC as well. So when when Greg is talking to you about the job. Does he ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Does he does he lay out the expectations? I, I mean, it would seem like that's it's pretty self-explanatory mm -hmm. what the expectations mm -hmm. in Alabama are. But I'm curious what the actual conversation is like. I don't know if he put it in those words, but I think he's trying to figure that out. If this is uh, the right fit. Right. I mean, I think that's really what it comes down to. The right timing, the right fit um, both ways, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, as much as you might want someone to be the right fit for you, your university. You're also just trying to figure out because, you know, you only get one chance at this, yep. you know, and you want to do it right the first time. And so hasn't been done for 17 years here. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's a big, a big move. So, um, I didn't really think, I don't really think the question was asked that way, but I think just a lot of conversation that helps you understand each other. And I just, it just jumped out at me how, great of a pro uh greg was how much he just loved this place um you know there's no i mean it's very well documented the opportunities that have come his way um and he's very highly sought after but he just loves alabama uh and uh, has done an awesome job leading not just you know the football program and and the athletic but the whole athletic department as a whole and you look at all the accomplishments that are happening and his leadership is, is just paramount to that success and so now you are into the actual football part you're into spring practice you've had a scrimmage now and gotten a chance to see what, what everybody can do how how long does it take to to really master understand this offense well i think there's there's levels to it right i think there's just the concepts and you know, the formations and things like that. And then I think it's really um, a lot of the window dressing and adjustments and tangents you can kind of go off on uh, to disguise, uh, but also uh, highlight your personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you know, right now we're just really trying to get the base installs yeah. and understood so that these guys can go into the summer mm -hmm. and just really uh, execute with high efficiency at a high level. Um, the things that are just really the core fundamentals to our to our system and yeah. our offense. And so, you know, they did a good job uh, in, you know, scrimmage one yesterday. Uh, we, you know, the guys really 
just think exactly did that. I thought Coach Sheridan and the staff, um, you know, kept it pretty simple, let them play ball, um, you know, took a step forward. Uh, and that's what you want to be doing each and every practice. As we go through the rest of the of spring, going into the summer, we'll continue to go off on those tangents that you can. And, um, you know, it's just a process. It's yeah. and, and they'll they'll continue to adjust to our personnel. Our personnel is different from university and place to place, you know. So uh, I think they're pro they're talking about that. And we're talking, discussing that, uh, whether it's quarterback, old line, mm -hmm. running backs, um, it's different. And we got to make sure we're doing a good job of using the system and the adjustments we talk about and we know are within to be able to work with the guys and highlight them. When you got to Washington, you brought in Michael, who had played in your offense before. Uh, Jalen Morrow hasn't. Uh, Ty Simpson hasn't. Dylan Lonergan hasn't. Uh, Austin Mack has. Mm -hmm. he, he comes. How do you evaluate those guys? How do you how do you split up the reps enough to to figure out who you know if you're giving everybody a fair shot? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I think what you said certainly is true. I mean, you can see in Austin Mack is more comfortable and that helped Michael Penix hit the ground running. Uh, no question about it. Um, you know, but these guys, I mean, we understand that uh, they're comprehending a lot of things and, uh, you know, you can see it in the fundamental things. You can see it just when we really break it down to where there are no reads and what, how well they throw the ball and the accuracy and, um, you know, try to put the things on their plate that are going to, the things that we need to coach them up on, but try not to make it to where they're thinking too much. And, uh, um, we give, you know, we gave even the scrimmage, you know, guys, some reps with the ones mm -hmm. just to make sure that there was enough reps to go around. We went mostly ones and twos and there were some threes work there as well. And when you have four quarterbacks, you gotta let each quarterback kind of work with each group. And so, uh, you know, we mixed it up some for that very reason. How much fun is it just as a tactician when you come in and you see that you've got a justice Haynes or on the other side of the ball, you, you've got you know, some of these absolute aliens mm -hmm. that, that you have on defense. Mm -hmm. what, how, how much fun do you have dreaming up things for them to do? Yeah. Well, and there's that fine line, right? Is it's making sure you can let them play fast. All the things we just talked about a quarterback doing the same thing with uh, those positions, but also using, you know, all the tactics and the, the schemes uh, and uh, the, the, the pieces to disguise and give you that one, even one more step, mm -hmm. um, to help them, you know, get home on, uh, on defense, uh, maybe get into the quarterback or, uh, just angles and, and leverage, uh, you know, in pass and run game. Uh, but you know, these guys are, are definitely great players, great athletes. Uh, and so it's fun seeing them do their thing. And, uh, we're going to have, you know, a lot of fun this fall, you know, utilizing the talents and skill. Before I let you go, I got to ask the, the, the goat still has an office here. Coach Saban still around somewhat. How much of, of a sounding board will you use him as? Yeah, I think there's, there, it's been kind of periods in time and early on there was a lot and then there no back and forth. Uh, he's, he certainly had a chance to be with some of our staff here and there. Um, I know people are well aware that, uh, Kane and the defense have, have, uh, utilize his thoughts and just oh, yeah. understanding a few things and trying to help with that transition. You know, uh, some of the transition of helping our guys understand certain things might be just even translation of, Hey, you called it this, this is what we call it. So boom, this, the light switch goes on. So, you know, I know it goes much more in depth, uh, on what he can help us with and, and we can, you know, bounce things off of him and he's, he wants this program to be great. There's, there's no doubt about it, but, uh, you know, um, you know, when, when those times come, I know that, uh, we can certainly pick up the phone and, and give him a holler and we want him to, to always feel a part of this. Cause you know, a lot of these guys came to this program because of him. And, uh, so there's some special players, special athletes here. And, uh, you know, that, that connection, I want that to always exist. And, um, you know, that's been pretty special up to this point. How much weight do you feel to keep it this special? Uh, as far as the tradition yeah everything yeah. uh yeah i mean you, that's that's the cool thing about coming here though and um if you think of it that way it, it probably can be overwhelming overbearing i just i just think it's it's about one thing it's coming in and being the best you can be whether it's bringing your attitude your energy your effort and that's all i ask of our guys and that's all i'm asking gonna ask of our staff and i you know in return i think that's really hope all they can ask of me. And, um, you know, when we bring our best attitude, energy, and effort every day, and we surround ourselves with really smart people, experts that have low ego, 
um, I think we'll continue to, the results will take care of itself. And we'll, you know, that's been kind of the formula for success wherever I've been. And, uh, you know, that's, I think, again, common, I think, in all successful and winning programs. And uh, that's what we'll attempt to do. That's what we'll work to do. Good luck and uh, that heat in the summer. Yeah, I don't know. Not South Dakota, not Seattle. No, it's very not. different. <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, we'll uh, we got to give it a run. We're here, so we're here for the long haul. No more two days. It'll be fine. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. Yeah, it's all good. Thank you, Roll Tide. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder: subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on Three. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On Three Sports YouTube channel.